Patch 13.10 dropped and what the f It was the biggest patch of the season as it introduced and reworked a lot of items and there are a lot of broken things right now. I like the idea of all of the item changes but Riot did a horrible job at balancing the numbers for them. A lot of the damage items are overtuned and those that can utilize them are currently meta. For the support class, that would be enchanters. Echoes of Helia being very strong and core support items becoming cheaper have made enchanters OP again. Naturally, if enchanters are meta, hook champs are going to be strong as well because they counter them. Mages have become a lot worse because their items are still the same price so they fall behind in item spikes. And then most engaged supports are weaker as well because they get outskilled by enchanters and can't survive all of the new damage in the game. Patch 13.10 evolved the old enchanter meta of stat checking the enemy with heals and shields to stat checking the enemy with heals, shields, and damage. RIP Moonstone by the way, that item sucks now. With that brief meta rundown, here's my 13.10 support solo queue tier list. I'm only going to cover champions A and above starting with Alistar. Alistar has good matchups against a lot of the meta supports and overcomes the issue of being too squishy with his ult. In this damage heavy meta, he can soak up a lot and provide lots of guaranteed CC which can make it very hard for assassins to pick people. Next is Seraphine. A lot of the support players put her low in tier list in the past but with the new items I feel like she is sleeper OP. The new items allow her to build utility and AP while being very cheap. She's also a very good blind pick because people usually expect her to be the ADC and not the support. If you want to try a build, I recommend going Echoes of Helia, Rylai's, Mandate, and go Font of Life. Next we have Rel. Like Alistar, she has good matchups against a lot of the meta supports. When she has a favorable matchup, she wins the lane hard, but when she is countered, it's hard for her to play. If the enemy comp does not have the tools to deal with her, she pops off. People always pick Rel as a counter, so her win rate is consistently high because of her feast or famine playstyle. Next we have our beloved Amumu. He has a lot going for him this patch. Enchanters are meta, so he's a natural counter. They nerfed a lot of the MR items, Fawn, Ma, and Mikhail's, and his kit provides a lot of hard CC that can immediately stop any assassins. Next is Ash. She has the craziest new build, which is the Echoes of Helia, Mandate, Fawn, Interaction. Ash does really well into Enchanters, and I'd probably move her up higher if it wasn't for Assassin meta. She has decent CC, but her lack of mobility makes it hard to play when everyone is flying around one-shotting people. Next is Sona. If enchanters are strong, Sona will always be strong. She is the hardest scaling enchanter, and the new items being cheaper allows her to scale faster. If you can handshake lane and go neutral as Sona, you will most likely win the game because of how strong she gets. Next is Nami, who probably benefited the most from Mandate moving to a legendary. She fits perfectly in this damage meta because of her damage amplification and CC in her kit. She also utilizes the new items very well. Echoes of Helia and Mandate are insane on her. Next is one of my favorites, Senna. If enchanters are meta, she will also be meta because she counters a lot of them in lane. Unlike most supports, she has the ability to solo carry and not rely on her team. I also think that because oracles got nerfed, Senna indirectly becomes better because she can build Umbral. Next is Pike. He is a natural enchanter counter and because it's damage meta, Pike pops off. All the damage makes it easy for him to get resets. Next is Blitzcrank. Same deal as Pike, he hard counters enchanters. Due to the lack of tanks in this meta, he has more targets he can grab, giving him more opportunities to pick. Starting off S, we have Annie. She's pretty strong in general right now, and you see her a lot in the mid lane, making her a good flex pick. Since items are cheaper, she's able to hit her power spikes a lot faster, and her point and click CC can lock down any assassins. With the combination of Shirelias and the low cooldown of her E, she enables carries very well. Annie also does a lot of damage, so she has a lot going for her. Next is Rakan. Shirelias being 200 gold cheaper has enabled him to make more plays earlier. He differentiates himself from the other melee engage supports in that he can outmaneuver his enemies evading the damage problem. He thrives in the assassin meta because his kit allows him to play off the high mobility of his teammates. In second place, we have Janna. If assassins are meta, there will always be a place for Janna. She is the best support at peeling off enemies and utilizes the items very well. I'd recommend either going Echoes of Helia or Shirelias on her. Finally, the highest tier support is Melio. He is the best enchanter because the power creep in his design is just too OP. The way they designed his W to be a non-ultimate ability that is an AoE heal that ticks breaks the balance for a lot of the enchanter items. Items that provide buffs through heals and shields, so Shirelia's Ardent and Staff, were made to be balanced and designed for champions with non-ticking AoE heals and shields. Just to show you how insane the value gets, Melio's W lasts for 6 seconds and ticks every 0.25 seconds, so in theory a teammate can proc Ardent 24 times in 1 W if they auto every tick. If you potentially get that for the entire team, you would get 96 procs of Ardent. For staff, you could potentially provide 120 to 180 AP and 80 ability haste for your team for 24 seconds. Those are just the item buffs alone, those allies would also get the extended auto range and the bonus burn from his passive. And that's just the W, he also has 2 more procs for his shield and another AoE heal from his ult. And that is why Melio is the best support in the game. That concludes my list, I'm pretty sure next patch there will be a lot of nerfs because the current game is broken. 